thank God for life and for his mercies. Let's pray together. Our Father, we are grateful for yet a privilege that you have given to us to share fellowship together. We ask as your children that you will bless this hour. We pray that you will send us your words from above. Cause our hearts to burn as we share. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Yesterday, we began to look at the gap that you will need in order to bring forth a soul unto the Lord. For today, I want to look at an instrument, a tool, an app, whatever you may call it, that God will graciously grant to you in order to be effective in your search for souls. Now, I want to take our minds to John chapter 4. Jesus met a woman at the well, and they began a discussion. Now, that discussion was from just ordinary things about life, water. It was so simple. It was so real. I'm thirsty. I'm weary. I've been on a journey. Give me water to drink. As simply as that statement may sound, uh, the Lord was looking beyond it. And from there, some other discussions, they began to engage themselves in talking. But along the line, I could see the Lord saying, go and call your husband. The woman said, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, you are right. You've told the truth. But even the one you have now is not your own. Now, this time, the defense has been broken. Because every soul that is still in the camp of the enemy is because there is a garrison. There is a hedge that the enemy has made around that soul that makes it difficult to penetrate. So we quickly see that by the word of this, by the power of discernment, by this gift of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was able to break through this woman. And she quickly began to say, it's like you are a prophet. How did you get to know something about me? This is very exciting. As a young student, I had woken up one morning and I was going to school. And before me was a lady. And the Holy Spirit said to me, talk to her. I say, Lord, this is too early. This is 6.30 a.m. I'm running for something. I'm not going to talk to somebody this early. The Lord said, I said, go and talk to her. I was still in that agreement with the Holy Spirit. Finally, I agreed to go. But by the time I agreed, she was almost getting to the place where she was going. So we couldn't engage too much. And I said to her, would you like to tell me where you are staying? He told me. So after school, I decided to go pay her a visit. I said, Lord, what am I going to say to this person? The Lord said, when you get there, ask her, how about her parents? It, it's so strange. So I left, I went, I greeted, I said, I'm the one that you met in the morning. He said, oh, I remember. He said, so how are your parents? She said, they are fine. I said, where are they? She mentioned a particular city where, where they are living. 
I was still listening to know what the Holy Spirit would say to me. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, she has told you a lie. Because her dad is late. I was still sitting before her. He said, her dad is late. Don't mind her. She's lying. I said to her, I both parents are alive. Reject. I said, why are you asking me that? I said, I'm only asking. At that, she broke down and said, my father has died. I said, then that is the reason why the Lord has come to meet with you. There and then, I brought the gospel. There and then, she received Christ. And the rest, it's history. I'm talking about the giftings of the spirit. I'm talking about the discernment of the spirit. I'm talking about the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom that God will be bringing to you to enable you break the age because there's a age. Every soul that has not come to the Lord that you see have a barricade. There is a protective covering that they have. They don't want anybody to cross it. You don't cross it by begging. God must give you the two at time, at time, because what works for one person may not necessarily work for another person. So there must be something that God will give to you to do, to say, that will bring down that wall of Jericho. So Jesus said to the woman, go and call your husband. Now that was the key to that soul. Every soul has a key. There is a key to one man. There's another key to another man. What may affect one person may not affect the other person. So we got to be very sensitive. We have to be up. Our antennas must be sharp. We must be listening to men through the spirit. The Holy Spirit must help us with this one. It's not something we can do on our own. It's not a guesswork. It is something God brings to us and says, this is what to say, this is what to do. This is what will open up this life for you. I happened to come out from church one day and I met someone standing by the road. And the Lord said to me, observe. And I was observing. People were stopping cars and moving and going and moving. But this person is standing there for a long time. I said, Lord, what is the matter? The Lord said, she doesn't have transport money. She's just waiting for everywhere to clear and she will begin mm -hmm. walking journey. She's going to trek home. I said, wow. He just moved close and said, please, can I talk to you? She said, yes. <laughs> and I brought out the money I had said, I think this will help you. She looked at me and broke down and began to cry. Now, every day we pass people, every day souls pass us. Some of them are wishing that someone will hear the cry. Some of them are wishing that someone will feel the anguish. I met a lady one time. And as she came, the Lord said, give her a gift. We just looked around and found a gift and gave her. She broke down and started crying. I said, what is it? She said, I'm 23 years. And since I was born, apart from my mother, nobody has ever given me a gift before. I don't know what it means for someone to just give you a gift. Now, it will take the voice of the Spirit. It will take a discernment to get to know that something is missing. Sometimes it's not really about the words you speak or the words you didn't speak. 
It may just be an action, a time that God wants you to carry out. And it will be so timely. It will be so apt. It will be so for the point that both you and the person knows that, look, this thing is by the Spirit. This thing has nothing to do with what I planned or what I thought out. It's just that there is something God wants to do in a life. And if you go through scriptures, you will see God doing that from time to time. He said to Philip, join these chariots. There is a chariot moving. Every day, chariots pass us. And we need to hear the Holy Spirit say, join the chariots. Now, someone is reading scriptures. He's not understanding. All that is needed to baptize this one into the kingdom, to baptize this one into the spirit, is just to join that chariot and bring an explanation. You know, the Bible calls the unbeliever the unlearned. That means they need someone to teach them. The word of God calls them the unlearned. The ignorant, those who do not know, those who do not have insight. That's what we are talking about. So we will need to allow the Holy Spirit to activate this app in our spirit because it's already there. You have the spirit of God living right on the inside of you. You have this app installed in your spirit. But there needs to be an activation. It has to be activated. It needs to be stirred up. It needs to be used so that it can become very functional on a daily basis. You become a listener. You are paying attention at time to what the spirit is saying about the next person, about the person that just passed you, about the person you are buying things from in the market, about the person you are working for, about every, everyone you come in contact with. The Bible says, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. So there is something the Spirit is saying. But sometimes the environment is too noisy that we can't hear what the Spirit is saying. And I'm talking about the inner environment. So there needs to be an inner quietness. The Bible says, in returning and in quietness shall be your strength. Our strength comes from that inner quietness. The app is already installed in your spirit. God wants you to use it. The Father wants you to discern. The Father wants you to be able to look into people's lives and see what is going on there. It is the desire of the Father that you assess people by the Spirit. It will not be a struggle. It will not be an argument. Now imagine Jesus meeting a man and saying, I saw you when you were under the tree. <laughs> he said, so you know me? He said, yes. I know you actually. We, 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 we're going to pray about this today. God, we need to stir up our spirit again. God, we need to stir up the giftings that are in us afresh. The gift of the spirit is not for show. It's for soul winning. The gift of the spirit is not for class. See, so this one has this. No, 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 no. It has a purpose. It is God's endowment. It is God's empowerment for us to reach out to men and women. I went into a place and my eye did not leave this particular person. My eye was so glued. I said, Lord, what is it? The Lord said, it's the daughter of my servant. I said, the daughter of your servant, how? Say, call her 
and pray for her. And I called her and said, I need to pray for you. And she agreed. And I began to pray. And I finished praying. She said, how did you know? She said, my father is a pastor, but I made up my mind that as I come to this school, I'm not going to do anything Christian. I'm going to hide my identity. Nobody will know the, the daughter of a pastor. I will just live as, as freely as I want to live. I said, yes, as I saw you, the Holy Spirit said, you are the daughter of his servant. I'm talking about Lord speaking to you about one so that that soul will be spared, so that that soul can be saved, so that there won't be any struggle. It's not a religious argument. No, no, it's not religious argument. Jesus did it. We have seen these giftings manifest in diverse ways. So there is a tool. There may be many other tools, but I am just narrowing myself for today on this one. That ability to decide, that ability to know things by the spirit of the Lord, that ability to read the scripts of a life by the help of the spirit of God. Remember Zachariah, he says, not by mind, not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. And what this is going to help you do is that when you look at someone as rough, as dirty, as, 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 uh, as unrenewed, as lost as the person may appear externally, you just know that there is a key that you can apply. And this life will be on the run for God. You just know. And I'm praying God to give us experiences so that it becomes a lifestyle, so that you begin to know, look, we can actually move around every day, touching lives. The Bible says everywhere he went, he was doing good because the Lord was with him. And the Lord is with you. The Lord is with us, Emmanuel. The Bible says, shall feel the breath on the earth. Oh, Emmanuel, the Lord is with us. And he's willing to give us those little whispers. He's willing for those little insights. He's willing. This is one of the things that will make a soul stand still. I say, how did you get to know this? How did you arrive at this? I say, take it easy. It's because God is interested. It's because God is bringing your matter before him. So I pray that we will get back to that level of discernment. Not for sure, not for ostentation, but to simply walk through them, touching lives, blessing lives, hearing the unhearable. <laughs> there are things that men don't hear, you will hear them. And God is bringing it to you solely for the purpose of so winning. I have countless encounters, countless examples where God, clearly, without any show, He just speaks a life and gives you the hook, the key that can open up that heart for the Lord. God is still in the business of doing that. He's still in the business of the outpour of the spirit. He's still in the business of granting you the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discernment of the spirit, all the gifts of the spirit. He said the gift of the spirit is given for you to profit. The profit here is the profit of souls. God wants you to make profits this time. And it will not be by struggle, mm -hmm. not by mind, 
not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So as you move out daily, as you leave your home very daily, as you go to work, as you go to church, wherever you go, there must be someone that the Lord is drawing. Day by day, I have an experience that lifts up my soul. I say, wow. God is sending you today. Go to the highways. Go to the streets. As you are going, listen. You will hear the noise on the mulberry trees. You will know the particular strategy to use. Remember, there are hedges. Remember, there are, there are things blocking me. But you will hear it. I'll say you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. And I want to say, it's not only about the lost. I sense that God is also sending us to backsliders. I give you a story. I was caught that there is a family having problems. They are fighting, they are quarreling. One of their sisters is having so much issue. As I was going, say, Lord, I'm going. And the Lord said, when you get there, defend that lady. He said, everybody in the family is against her. Go and defend her. He said, wow, Lord. And I said, entered everybody in the family is against her. Everybody spoke against her. And they are waiting for me to conclude the judgment. And I spoke in her favor. I said, yeah, she hasn't done well. But it could be that we have not prayed enough for her to do well. And we pray for her now. As I said, this, this lady broke down. She said, I want to see you. She followed me and came to my office. She told me I was a Christian. Or something happened. My family does not know. And I backslid. And I decided that since I have done it once, let me continue. And say, no. If you are driving a vehicle and it enters the bush, you don't say, since this vehicle has entered the bush, I will keep driving it. I say, put it on the reverse and come back. That's how she came back to church. She came back to fellowship and all the rest of them. And everybody was like, wow. You will hear that voice. I say again, God is also sending us to backsliders. There are many of his children that have gone away. And God will be asking us to go get them back. He will give you the gifts. He will stir them up. The discernment will be there. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, all the faith that you need, where miracles are needed, where healings are needed, whatever it is, wherever prophecy is needed, whatever it will take. If he died for us, there is nothing he cannot give to us. I want to stop here for today. I want to believe that you've been blessed. I want to say to you, stir up the gift of God that is in you, which was put there by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. I want to say, neglect not the gifts of the Spirit. I want to ask that the hand of the Lord will be so strong upon you. I want to pray that the Lord will clean up your ears. I want to pray that your antenna will be so high. I want to pray that your sensitivity will be top notch. I want to pray that grace be multiplied to you. I want to pray that both the lost and the backsliding, you will get them back. This year will be a very fruitful year for you. You will touch many lives in a very amazing manner. God bless you so much. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.